thought I will, but today I am still just a bill. He signed your bill, now you're a law. Oh, yeah! All right, welcome back. That, of course, is how it's supposed to work. Uh, but today our Congress looking less like Schoolhouse Rock and more like Schoolhouse Knock It Down Any Way You Can and then run from the building hiding. Last night we had an opportunity to see clearly just how dirty politics is in this country and how a good bill, in fact, does not become a law. Here's a little term you probably haven't heard in any educational rock videos. It's called the secret hold. It's a maneuver that essentially allows any single senator to anonymously block the progress of legislation or a nomination without ever having to give a reason why. Think of it as a, think of it as a stupid fraternity trick that is used to corrupt the process of running the United States of America. If it sounds ridiculous, it's because it is ridiculous. Still, it's taken 10 long years to generate bipartisan support for an amendment to stop the process. I spoke to some optimistic co-sponsors of a bill to do just that, Democrat Ron Wyden and Republican Chuck Grassley yesterday afternoon. We're taking away the adjective secrets, secret. Uh, we're doing away with secrets so that any member that puts a hold on a bill uh, will have to give his name and the reason for doing it. And my feeling is that if you're in a member of the United States Senate and you've got a position on a bill, you ought to have guts enough to say who you are and why you're doing it. I think this is potentially a transformational moment. The key there would be potentially. All indications were that the jig may finally have been up with senators forced to bring their objections to poor old Bill into the open. Senators Wyden and Grassley were expecting a yes vote yesterday. But then the twist, the death of Wyden and Grassley's amendment. Republican Senator from South Carolina, Jim DeMint at the last second, hitching a controversial immigration amendment to their amendment to ban secret holds. DeMint's amendment to the secret holds amendment would have required the completion of the 700 mile southwest border fence no later than 12 months after the date of the enactment of the secret hold amendment. That a vote most lawmakers were not prepared to touch during an already difficult financial reform fight because they work for the banksters. I don't know why that's difficult, honestly, but anyway. Uh, the move evoked a very impassioned response from Senator Wyden. I never ever would have done that to another colleague. I can't recall another instance where the cause of open government took a beating, took a blindsiding, Mr. President, like the cause of open government took this afternoon. And I just want to tell my colleagues, I intend to come back to my post here again and again and again. Well, compare those Senate shenanigans to the cute little scene in Schoolhouse Rock that's sold as propaganda to people who actually believe this is a functioning democracy, where lawmakers, quote, discuss and debate. Doesn't that sound absurd? They do it face to face. If only it was that simple. Instead, they take money from special interests and play games like this, as you and I both know. They certainly don't teach anybody about the secret backroom deals, special interests, backstabbing, and all the rest of it that actually operate our so-called democracy. Joining us now, Melanie Sloan, Executive Director of CREW, the Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. The group is very active in the fight against secret holds. What actually can be done? Uh, and, is it, and, and is it now Senator DeMint's ball? In other words, is Senator DeMint the one who actually has to get this done since he's the one who had the objection, apparently? Well, I don't think Senator DeMint has any interest in getting it done. I, I think he wants to help make secret holds, uh, the legislation to kill secret holds, die a death. I think there are a lot of senators who really like secret holds, but don't want to be seen as voting to uphold them. We have a comment somewhere from Senator DeMint's office, I'm told. E effectively, what he was saying, and it's not actually in the notes here, but what he was saying was that he objected to the nature of the secret holds amendment, that he actually supports the ending of secret holds, but found the secret holds amendment to be non-germane uh, to financial reform, uh, that he actually supports transparency, and that he believes Wyden Grassley should have been tougher than it was. And that comes from Senator DeMint's press secretary earlier today. Are you, are you saying that that is insincere? 
I am, in fact, saying that is insincere. It sounds like some rationalization after the fact. Uh, I think senators offer uh, ger non germane amendments to bills every single day on every single piece of major legislation, and uh, that's not been an issue before. And I'm sure someone can go through and find all of Senator DeMint's non germane amendments. Uh, so that sounds like hogwash, really. Um, but, you know, in one respect, I'll agree with Senator DeMint. I don't think it is tough enough. I think it was a great start. But by the same token, there wasn't a lot of uh, enforcement mechanism in this Wyden Grassley yeah. provision. So, but why, is, but why wouldn't ethics. we then? Why wouldn't we then take Senator Dement at his word? He says he wants a tougher bill, and we can all start to write to Senator Dement's office. And, and, and obviously, Senator Dement was unsatisfied with the efforts of Senator Wyden or Senator Grassley. He obviously thinks that they could do better, that they were incompetent in some way or ineffective. And Senator Dement believes he can get rid of not only secret holds but apparently more. Uh, shouldn't we just be pointing all of our fingers at him and putting the pressure on his office to solve this obvious problem? Well, we certainly should, and we should ask for what guidance he can offer us in this in this area. Of course, the issue didn't just arise yesterday, so Mr. DeMint has had plenty of time and opportunity to come up with a bill that is tougher, and we haven't seen that from him up to this point. I mean, this issue has really been around for, as you said, 10 years, but certainly since 2007 when the Senate passed the Honest Leadership and Open Government Act, and in there they included a provision that allegedly killed secret holds, but really didn't do anything to secret holds. So we've seen a lot of legislation that's not tough enough. The question is, can the Senate ever really pull itself together to get rid of this uh, undemocratic institutional procedure? Well, I would say the question is, how many of these senators have to be thrown out of their jobs before the Senate becomes a democratic institution again? How many do you think it'll be? Uh, you know, it's very hard My to say, it but it seems many. like the longer, once you're there, you seem to have a very different view on these institutional procedures than when you're trying to get there. Yeah, uh, I, I want to read a quote as well from Senator Chuck Grassley on this. Uh, he says, we're in a very frustrating situation with our secret holds amendment. It's unfortunate because we had a chance in a bipartisan way to make the actions of the Senate more transparent to the American people. Senator Wyden and I have been at this a long time, so we're not about to let this hiccup stop us from pressing for more sunshine and accountability in the Senate. Do you think Senator Grassley is right to characterize uh, the kneecapping, to use Senator Wyden's phraseology, as a hiccup? I do, because really there's nothing to prevent Harry Reid, Senate Majority Leader, from bringing up a, a secret holds resolution as a standalone bill. That is, in fact, how Mr. Grassley and Mr. Wyden originally introduced it back in April. So the Senate's free to bring this up any time. And as they're only changing their own rules, uh, the House doesn't have to vote on this. It could simply be a Senate rule change. And so there's nothing stopping anyone from bringing this up another day. Yeah, well, I think Senator DeMint, it's one of those, you broke it, you bought it. He seems like he's got the best solution. We'll see what he comes up with. Um, a pleasure to have the conversation. Uh, thank you for it. Uh, again, Melanie Sloan, Executive Director for CREW, Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. You must get laughed at a lot. Uh, a pleasure. Nice to see you. Thanks. A final thought on all of this from